Hi, I'm Scott from Six Points Woodworks, and we're building this 41-foot trawler yacht in the backyard of our upstate New York home. Now, she was designed with the home builder in mind, and once complete, she'll be able to cross oceans and take two people comfortably anywhere in the world that they want to go. This is the Sea Dreamer Project. With temperatures at over 100 degrees out in the boat shed at 10 a.m., I decided it was a good time to work in the air conditioning, get rid of that large deck beam jig that's been taking up so much space in the shop, and finish the forward deck beams for the cabin. So it was back to the pile of my salvaged cypress from those old pickle barrels to get that construction process moving forward. Now I wanted to take a little extra time here because the orientation of the grain in this lumber is really meant for barrel making and not for visual appeal. So I needed to take these rough boards and essentially quarter them so I got the edge grain showing in the direction and orientation that I wanted. This was a bit of extra work, but I think in the end you'll see it was well worth it. Because these deck beams will be a prominent feature in the forward cabin, I treated them just like I was making a piece of furniture. And that meant plenty of time at the table saw, joiner, and planer. But I also needed to make sure my stock was properly prepared square and flat because I need to make some longer beams out of these shorter lengths of lumber. And we're going to use a technique that you've probably seen on some other channels, and that involves a scarf joint. Now normally I don't take the time to do scarf joints when I'm doing a lamination because with the lamination process, backing up each joint with multiple layers of lumber and glue is plenty strong. However, in this situation, how they appear is really important. So taking the time to do the scarf joints will look much nicer than butt joints. 
Now the scarfing joint that I'm doing is a very simple one that will taper to a feathered edge. It's accomplished with a very simple homemade jig and it has a slope ratio of 12 to 1, meaning for every 1 inch of thickness on the board, the scarf will extend for 12 inches. The longer you can make your scarf, the stronger it will be. Now because these forward deck beams are structural as well as a visual component of the boat, taking the time to do a longer scarf joint will pay dividends in the strength department. Now you know we're big supporters of our first responders here at the Sea Dreamer Project, so if you're current or former police, fire, EMS, communications, the armed forces, any kind of public service job, and you want to have a patch from your agency represented on our Salute to Service wall, we would be honored to have it. Just send me an email at contact at seadreamerproject.com. I'll give you our address and you can get that mailed out to us. Once all of my stock was prepared, I was then ready to move forward with the glue up. And I used a set of dial calipers just to make sure that the scarf joint was the same thickness as the rest of the board. I have found in the past that just trying to visualize where the joint lines up isn't always effective, and using the calipers just gives me a little bit of reassurance to know that the joints are properly aligned.
With all the deck beams down to their final thickness and then a finished sanding, I decided they were missing a little bit of detail. So I used a very simple router bit that will create a beaded edge along the underside of each deck beam. Now this rounded edge will be a nice visual detail, but it will also help hold the finish better. And in the event that we have someone over six foot nine on the boat, it'll be a safety feature so that when they bump their head, it doesn't have a sharp edge.
And finally, before I could put these deck beams aside to continue work on the carlins inside the boat, I wanted to get at least one coat of finish on here. Now, this is a penetrating oil, it's called Danish oil, and it'll give it a little bit of protection by hardening the surface of the wood, but I really wanted to see how this grain would pop with a coat of finish. So I did a simple process of applying the finish with a brush. I used some 800 grit wet dry sandpaper to work the finish into the wood and then wiped it down. All right, one more to go, and I cannot tell you how pleased I am with how these came out. I absolutely love this warm amber color, and that is just natural with a clear finish. The oil penetrating gives us that deep, rich amber color. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love the defects in the wood and the nail holes and the discoloration. You have to like the rustic look, which I do, but it looks just beautiful in person, and I'm so pleased with how they came out. I love how our scarf joints came together to make these longer beams from shorter pieces of lumber. In a lot of areas, those seams just disappear. And then in the other areas, sometimes the contrast that comes together between the two seams looks great too. So it really was a win-win, and I'm glad I took the extra time to try to match up the grain uh, to get things to kind of flow together cohesively. And I think it's really going to pay dividends down the line when I'm sitting in that forward cabin, looking up at those beams and thanking myself for taking the time to, you know, do it right. And the other thing is I wish you could feel the finish on these beams because that wet sanding process gives them a silky smooth finish. I just love it. I do it on most of my woodworking projects and it'll make it a lot easier to clean. When we come back and do our top coat of poly, it'll be that much smoother and easier to apply. So I'm very pleased with that process and how they came out in that respect as well. Now we hope folks will go check out the description in this video where you'll find a link and a discount code that you can use over at Jamestown Distributors. Jamestown's been a big supporter of ours and we hope that our viewers will help support companies that support the Sea Dreamer Project. If you're interested in helping support our project, you can do that just by watching these videos and when the ads come on by allowing them to play for at least 30 seconds or engaging with them by clicking on them, that's all the support we could really ask for. But if you really want to get involved, you can go over to our merchandise store and there's a link below or next to this video where you can buy things from that represent our brand. Uh, we've got some lower priced items. We've got things that are a little bit more extravagant. So any support in that respect would be greatly appreciated. But like I said, just watching the videos and engaging with the ads is really all the support we could ask for. But always, your job is what it always is. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.